Wow. Um, wow. And now we have some chess news. Let's go with an article. Here we go. Belgian IM expelled from chess tournament after refusing body scan. Article by Peter Doggers. Now, I did something on this before, but I mispronounced the guy's name. So let's be clear. Um, as, as awesome as it is to say DocX, because of course, Microsoft Word, the extension ending is dot DocX. The correct way to say it is Docs, apparently. So unfortunately, even though it makes for a great story by saying dot Docs, X, DocX, uh, apparently it's pronoun pronounced um, Docs. I am Stefan Dox was expelled from the Benidorm, Benidorm Open in Spain after refusing a metal detector body scan. The chief arbor of the tournament is preparing a report for the FIDE Fair Play Commission. Dox, a 48-year-old international master from Belgium and a three-time member of the Belgian Olympiad squad or Olympic squad, was playing in the Benidorm Chess Open A Super 2000 tournament. It was a nine-round Swiss held December 3rd to 12th in Benidorm, a tourist coastal town about 100 kilometers south of Valencia, Spain. During the eighth round, Docs refused to be scanned with a metal detector. The chief arbiter, Ramon Garcia, warned him twice that he would be expelled from the tournament if he continued to refuse, a measure that follows FIDE regulations. When Docs still did not allow the check, he was disqualified and not paired for the ninth and final round. Okay, so what exactly happened? Let's, let, let, let's see, what, what exactly happens? Besides random body scans, the anti-cheating measures at the Benidorm Open include a included a review of the games, the compulsory use of a coat check when entering the playing hall, and special attention from the arbiters for players who are spending a relatively long time away from the board. Docs did not have a coat checked as he was never wearing one. Okay, what? fair enough. Arbiter Garcia is preparing a report for the FIDE Fair Play Commission, which suggests the player is suspected of cheating. Okay, here we go. Garcia contacted Kenneth Regan, an associate professor at the State University of New York uh, at Buffalo, who has advised FIDE for several years. Regan uses a model to make statistical tests for, for using computers to cheat at chess. He also had a look at Doc's games years ago and found nothing. Regan shared his conclusion about Doc's tournament in Benidorm with chess.com, saying that he would have been caught from the statistics he would not have or saying he would not have been caught from the statistics in a normal run of use over many tournaments so this is where i step in and i say hey let's 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 let, let me recall for a second there's a certain grandmaster i feel like he's also united states chess champion who basically said he doesn't believe believe in certain things and said grandmaster uh was ridiculed by many people saying that he doesn't know anything about statistics and he's just a chess player hmm interesting all right so let's keep going. Um, Reagan notes that Doc's, Doc's intrinsic rating performance in Benidorm was 85 ELO below his rating, both meaning that his play on the whole was below expectation for a 2450 rated player, and for rounds one to four, he played over 300 ELO below expectation. Regan couldn't find much about Doc's play in other tournaments either. He has, he has had no other individual tournaments covered by Twick, the Week in Chess, or Chess Base since late 2019, and the record of Open since 2017 is unclear at most. So basically, he just hasn't played Chess, COVID, everything else. All right. Um, nonetheless, rumors about Docs have been floating around the Dutch and Belgian chess scene for about a decade. As early as 2012, a Belgian club reported him for alleged cheating. One Dutch IM commented to chess.com regarding the Benidorm incident. Obviously, everyone knew this for 10 years already. Everyone knew this. For, okay, so wait, so they're saying these rumors have been around for these rumors have been around for years. Hmm. Sounds kind of familiar, eh? Anyway, the question is: are we dealing with widespread paranoia or are there valid reasons to doubt docs? Okay. <laughs> I mean, let's keep going. GM Arthur Kogan, who runs a private Facebook group dedicated to the fight against cheating in chess, triumphantly posted about Doc's disqualification. The Ukrainian-born Israeli grandmaster, who lives in Spain, told Chess.com that he has suspected Doc's for a long time, but without ever finding evidence of cheating. He was like a normal 2200-2300 player 10 years ago, and then 9 years ago there were some suspicious cases. He suddenly defeated some, some strong grandmasters, Kogan said. Okay. 
Docs who, docs who had seen these, this article before publication as chess.com asked for comment only objected to Kogan's statement here. I became an FM when I was 17, when my rating got over 2300 and I never went under, Docs pointed out in an email. Also, I scored several more IM norm performances in recent years, including at Fisher's Olympiad in Chennai, which had strict anti-cheating measures. Now, this is a very valid point that the Olympiad in Chennai, out of, out of all the chess tournaments, um, that haven't happened, you know, since a certain certain thing a couple of months ago, that definitely had the, the most stringent anti-cheating measures. So that this is actually somewhat important to note. It is also inaccurate to state that Doc started to beat strong grandmasters a decade ago. He has done that throughout his career. For instance, GM Friso Nyboer in 1993, GM Evgeny Moroshnichenko in 2007, and GM Ivan Sokolov in 2011. Okay. Okay, fair enough. After looking at several games of Docs, including online games, Kogan nonetheless reported the Belgian player to both FIDE and the Association of Chess Professionals, ACP, some years ago. No action was taken. I found some system. There is no coincidence, claims Kogan, but he was tricking Regan for many years. He was wise cheating. I think he used an engine only sometimes. Wow. Um, wow. Adding to the suspicion is the fact that Doc seems to have had his phone with him during games, not being shut off multiple times during his career. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. what is the, where is the reference on this? I'm, I'm curious where the reference is on this point. Because they're saying like, they're saying he had his phone with him multiple times, but it multiple times during his career. Like, it, it, was this like, are there actual people who, um, who can verify that? Because I, I mean, that literally is like a very strong statement when they say that. Um... The 59-year-old Belgium GM, Luc Venance, listed three games where Docs lost by default because his phone made sounds. Oh, okay, so here we go. So they list three games where he lost because his phone rang or, or something like that. Obviously, most famous, the most famous example of that, I think, was Nigel Shore. He, I think his phone rang during a game. I, I want to say it was against Ruslan Ponomaria, but I don't remember who it was against. But there was, there was an incident, instance very early on, right around the time that phones first started being banned, um, where I think Nigel's phone went off and it was an actually it was a critical game, no less. So he, he lost the game because of that, which which really sucked. Um, so, OK, they, they list three games. Um, Fagan Fagan versus Docs, Belgian Team Championship 2007, Do Docs versus Reza Sade, German Oberliga 2015 and Docs versus Carmel, Belgian Team Championship 2016. Now, 2007 is so long ago that I don't even know, know if phones were actually banned at that point. But 2015 and 16 is well past the point when I think that the phones were, I mean, at least should have been banned by tournaments. Maybe, maybe they weren't, but they definitely should have been by that point. Some members of the private Facebook group have drawn their conclusions, but none of the above is evidence that Docs had computer assistance during games. His refusal to comply with the body scan in Benidorm was enough to expel him, but neither the tournament arbiter nor the organizer have provided an official statement as to why they have suspicions of cheating. Their report for the FIDE Fair Play Commission might shed a light, although it's unclear whether it will be publicly available. All right. Arbiter Garcia is not sure whether FIDE will be looking into the case because a disagreement between the Spanish Chess Federation and the Valencian Regional Federation prevents the Benidorm tournament from being valid for FIDE ELO calculations. What? Like, even aside from this whole article, but oh my gosh, like, look at the world of chess, you guys. This is the world we live in, that you have a tournament, and it, it's not even going to be rated because the Spanish Chess Federation and the local Valencian Regional Federation are, like, mad at each other. This is, this is, this is, I mean, this is as good as it gets. What can I say? This really is as good as it gets. Like, you don't even know what's going to happen because you have the, the, the National Federation and the Regional Federation, like, like arguing with each other that that is great that that's great that is absolutely phenomenal um anyway it prevents it from being valid for fide elo calculations it's kind of like when i played a tournament in armenia in the disputed region uh, now that's a little bit different of course because it's like national um chess, chess bodies for both both countries but i played a tournament in karabakh in the disputed region uh between azerbaijan and armenia and that term that i played in which levon played in, was never rated for um FIDE rating. If it had been, my rating would be five points higher at 2773. And I'd still, I think, be number number five in the world, but it would be nice to have those points. At any rate, um, 
Yuri Garrett, chairperson of the FIDE Fair Play Commission, told chess.com that they sometimes look at unrated tournaments as well. There are other reasons why the commission may or may not may not take a case based on the individual circumstances of the case at hand. All right. Um, now, the one thing that this does beg is it begs the question when they say they look at unrated terms as well. I mean, that just means that they, they should probably be looking at all tournaments, right? I mean, unrated online everywhere if 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 they're saying if this is what's being said here. So this is an interesting tidbit at the end. At any rate, once again, it doesn't look like there's any hard conclusive evidence, but someone doesn't want to be scanned and we'll see what what the FIDE Fair Play Commission does. But obviously something that needs to be taken very, very seriously.